Okay. Only six or seven students here. Uh, the number of re registered students is around 19. So more than 10 students already give up. <laughs> In the previous class, we have uh, talked about the, the theory of Martin side transformation, so for which is called the phenomenological theory of Martin side transformation in somewhat qualitative way. So uh, to handle that theory in more mathematical way. We have to be familiar with some basics of the crystallography. So this class and next class, I will give you some basic information on the uh, crystallography theory. And then we'll, we will move to how to handle mathematically the phenomenological theory of the mountainside transformation. And that will be the last class of this semester. As you know, the crystal structure can be defined as periodic array of atoms. And that kind of periodic array can be represented by a unit cell, which is the small unit which is repeatedly appeared in the crystal structures. So the problem will be how we can how can we define the unit cell? The most convenient way is to introduce the basis vector. Basis vector is the vector consisting the unit cell in three dimensions. Here we have unit cell of the face center of the cubic material. So one of the convenient way to define the unit cell will be introduce the basis vectors along the edge of the unit cell. Here, A1, A2, A3 will be one of our choice to construct the unit cell in the abscissing materials. The advantage of this basis vector, intro, introduction of this basis vector is that we can represent any arbitrary vectors in the crystal structures with this basis vector. So here, let's consider this vector u. And this vector u can be represented by here u, a1, a2, a3. And in this case, u1, u2, u3 will be 1, 1, 1. So the vector u in FCC material can be represented by simple form of 1, 1, 1. From now on, I, uh, we will follow. There are several notations to describe the vectors and plane, but from now on we will follow the suggestion of the Mackenzie bow. In the notation of the Mackenzie bow, we have to specify the basis on which the vector is defined. Here, A means the basis of on which 
we are lying. So here, A1, A2, A3 will be the basis vector of A, and this is the A basis. So this means vector U defined on basis A. And when we describe the row vectors, we will write the vector U with this notation. And when we define the column vectors, 1, 1, 1, we will follow this notation. So you have to consider when you look at this parenthesis that you cannot, you should understand that this is row vector. But when you look at this symbol, you have to understand that means column vector. Even though we write the vector 1, 1, 1, but in mathematical manipulation, when this notation of appear, you have to understand that represent the column vector, which is So this kind of notation is very useful, not to confuse the basis. Because when we handle the crystal level theory of mountain size transformation, we move this basis to that basis, and that basis to another basis. So this, the basis on which the vector is defined is very, should be clear. As you understand, there are not only one way, there are not only one way to define the basis. For example, let's return to our FCC material even though in previous slide we defined the basis A1, A2, A3 along the edge. But we can also define another basis. Here B1, B2, B3 to describe the FCC crystallographic structure. Right? Here B1, B2, B3, the unit cell defined by this one is also, the repeating part inside of the FCC crystal. So we can select this unit cell as a basis vector to define the basis vector. In that sense, it is quite natural to, to see how one vector defined in one basis is represent in other basis. For example, here, U, this is 1, 1, 1. in basis A, how this vector represented in basis B. So the matrix which convert this matrix into this vector into the same vector, but different in this basis on B is called coordinate transformation 
matrix. So by considering coordinate transformation matrix, you can convert the expression of one vector in one basis to another basis. So how we can obtain, how can we obtain the coordinate transformation matrix? One of the tips is to describe the basis vectors in all the system in U system. So here, A1 is here, A1 is here, A1 is E1, E2, plus zero. A2 is it is here. Minus B1. Two, time, and a three will be a three. Zero, zero. So from the coefficient of this relationship you should take the coefficient of this first row as the first column and this will be coordinate transformation matrix. So in if we write the relationship in a tangible rotation U B A A So this should be the column vector to multiply to the matrix form and it produce, it generate the expression of vectors on basis B, which is a column vector. This is an uh, example of the transformation of the basis. And the initial basis is here 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And the third one is perpendicular to the screen. And this is a simple rotation around 45 degrees. And you can evaluate from the mathematics of the high school class, but you can also obtain this relationship from this one by representing the old basis with the new basis and take the coefficient and try it by yourself. The next one is the definition of direction and plane in the crystal structures. 
definition of direction is quite straightforward because, as I mentioned, the direction is a vector and it can be represented by the combination of the basis vector. And the coefficient of that relationship indicate the definition of direction in that crystallographic structure. So here, vector u is one, one, one direction in this crystal structure, right? Here, basis is a1, a2, a3, and u is 1a1, 1a2, 1a3. So we can define the direction as 1, 1, 1. But definition of plane is somewhat different. The definition of plane is that at first, we have to find out the intersection of some plane with the basis axis and find out the intersection and take, take what? Take the reverse. Here, for example, when we consider this red plane, the intersection is one, one, one. So in this case, even though we take the reverse, Still remain one on one. But how about this blue? The intersection is one 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 of blue. And take reverse, this is one one two. So the index of this blue plane is one one two. However, this kind of in the expression of the plane is not that particular convenient when we handle the mathematical formulation. The more, the more convenient way to define the plane is define the plane with the plane normal vector. Here is a plane, and when we know there is always a plane normal vector, so by define, defining the plane with its normal vectors, it is it will be more convenient to mathematically uh, handling to mathematically handles. It will be more convenient. So you already know that in cubic system, in cubic system, the plane HKF, the plane normal vector to plane HKL will be HKL direction in cubic system. But that is not true in general crystallographic structure, general crystal structure. Here, let's consider parallel crystal structure. Here, this is base vector A1, this is A2, and this is A3. A1 and A2 is equivalent, but A3 is twice, let's assume twice larger than a1 or A2. Then this is, this will be trace of plane A0 
uh, 101 basis on this A basis. So actually the plane is like here, right? Then this is just a tray. So let's think about the direction of 101. Here, this is a vector 101 on basis A. It is obvious that the plane normal of this plane is here. And you can understand the plane normal is not parallel to 101. So now you can understand this is not true for general case. So the how we can define the plane normal more convenient way. It will be convenient that if This relationship will be whole. But we already know this is not whole in general case. So our choice can be change the basis to satisfy this relationship. So change the basis from A to A star to satisfy the direction HKL in new basis is normal, plane normal in plane HKL in basis A. That is the concept of reciprocal lattice. With old basis, with the real basis, A1, A2, A3, the basis of reciprocal lattice is defined with this one. A1 is cost product A2, A3, divided by the dot product of A1 and the cost product of A2 and A3. It looks complicated, but not that complicated. Here, this term is the volume of the original unit cell. And this cost product, from the definition of the cross product, The magnitude is sine theta. Theta is the angle between two. And the direction is the normal to the plane. consisted by A2 and A3, right? So the direction is when you screw from A2, A3 direction, then the direction of the cost product will be this. 
discussion, right? If you have reverse, it changes the order, then the direction will be opposite side, right? So from this relationship, let's consider the magnitude of A1 star. The direction is obvious. Direction is A, the direction of A1 star is the plane normal which contain the plane which contain A2 and A3 and A1 star is the plane normal of that plane. Then how about the magnitude? This will be this will be a two sine theta. Right? Here. Theta is here. And this one will be a two. A1 cosine pi. Okay. So you can write down this is A1 cosine pi of. So the direction of A1 star is perpendicular to this plane, and its magnitude is reverse of this distance, right? Reverse of the distance between this plane and this plane, the reverse of the height of the unit cell. And one, one of the important property of this reciprocal basis is that when we consider the dot product between the basis of real lattice and reciprocal lattice, A I dot A J star is one when I equal J. The index is the same when index is the same, but J when I J. This is obvious when you make a dot product. This A one and product A1 and A2 and A3, then you can realize that you can know this is always whole. As I told, the most convenient things when we consider the Reciprocal lattice of some certain crystal structure is that
when we consider plane HKL in some lattice, some basis A, and the HK direction in its reciprocal lattice, this vector, HKL vector defined in HKL vector defined in reciprocal lattice is always plane normal of HKL plane defined in original lattice. So let's return to our previous tetragonal structure. Here is A1, A1, A2, and A3. When we get the reciprocal lattice, then A1 is the same to A1 star, A2 is the same to A2 star, A3 is one fourth of its length. So now you can understand the 101 defined on its reciprocal basis will be plane normal of 101 plane defined on its original basis. In more general case, there is A1, A2, A3, and let's assume this this is plane HKL defined in based on this basis, then this direction this when this plane is HKR, this point will be H A K from the definition of plane, right? So this vector will be A2 right? So let's consider the cross product of this vector and HK direction defined on the reciprocal lattice. This will be zero. And also you can do the same thing on this vector. So this vector HKL defined on the reciprocal basis always perpendicular any vector to any vectors on plane HKL defined on original basis. Okay? So that's why we define the reciprocal lattice. The definition of reciprocal lattice gives you another important property of on the cross product. 
usually when we consider the uh, dot product, when usually when we consider the dot product. You just consider this. Like this. But this is right only for cubic bases. When we consider the dot product or the vector defined in general basis, that is not true. So when we consider the dot product in general crystal structures, dot product of the vectors based on general crystal structure, we have to consider the dot product like this way. One is defined by the original basis, and the other is defined by the reciprocal basis. Then the product of the coefficient will give you right value on the dot product. Next one is the, in the previous one is the coordinate transformation matrix. And uh, next one is the homogeneous deformation matrix. Lattice transformation matrix is that the relationship between two bases. So how the vector defined on this basis is expressed in another basis. Those kind of transformation is done by considering relative, a co coordinate transformation matrix. But sometimes we have to describe the deformation on the same basis. Here, the homogeneous deformation means that two parallel vectors before deformation still remain parallel, parallel after deformation. So the vectors before deformation on this body is deformed from a different vectors. So the deformation matrix give you the changes of vector u by deformation and it will change vector V. So when you stretch some, some body, then the initial vector is here and then after stretching, it back, this vector will be stretched. So the relationship between the vector before stretching and after stretching is given by the deformation matrix. So the difference between the coordinate transformation matrix and uh, deformation matrix is that coordinate transformation matrix is the matter how we can express vector u, the same vector u on defined on one basis. How can we convert the expression based on another basis. But the deformation matrix is better 
on fixed basis the changes of the vector u by the deformation. So let's consider how how it works, for example, in Bain deformation. As you know, the vein deformation is a compression along this axis and stretching along this axis, right? So how is the vector affected by that kind of deformation? Based on the we see this structure as a unit cell. We can check how this basis vector, this three basis vector, is affected by the deformation. By checking how this basis vector affected by the deformation, we can construct the deformation matrix. Three basis vector of this BCT unit cell is given by right. This is unit cell of this one, this one, and this one. It will deform to Here, a gamma is the lattice parameter of the austenite. A alpha is the lattice parameter of the marking band. So when we consider these three unit vector converted into this one, it means that the deformation matrix consider the deformation matrix. How can we construct the deformation matrix.
So from this relationship, you can get the information matrix, and this will be oh no. will be So you can understand when you want to get the deformation matrix, then you have to know how the basis vector is deformed by the specific deformation. And from the relationship between the matrix, then you can get the deformation matrix. Okay. Then finally, I'd like to say about the undistorted but rotated vector in brain deformation. As I told you, when we consider the vein deformation, vein deformation itself is not uh, invariant line or invariant plane strain, right? But when we consider the combination of the vein deformation and width by the rotation, then you can find one invariant line, which means that there is one vector there is a vector of which length is not affected by the vein deformation, but the, it rotates by the vein deformation. Here, vector A prime, B prime, and A, B is the same length, but it is rotated. So the vector A prime, B prime, will be uh, original vector AB is the vector of which length is not affected by vein deformation, but it rotates during the vein deformation. So how we can find, find out, how can we find out the index of that vector using the deformation matrix? As I told you, the deformation matrix of Bain deformation is given by this, uh, this eta 1, eta 2, eta 3, and it can be represented with this one. So when you consider deformation of vector by this plane deformation. Here. X1, 
one. Then we form vector in by this one. If this vector x is undistorted but rotated vector, then the length of this vector should be the same to the original vector. So from this relationship, you can have the condition Condition of undistorted vector is given by this equation. And this equation gives you the cone. Here, actually, this vector, these two vectors, is a part of the cone. Even though I'm not good at drawing. This is original sphere, and this This is the formed one. Then the vector, which is not stretched, the trace of vector will be part of this cone. So this formula is the expression of this cone, which is called the Bain cone. Okay, actually, any vectors on this cone is undistorted but rotated vector. Okay. Ah, uh, the progress is not that fast. Well that I expected, so I'm not sure, but uh, we have to, I'm not sure, but we might put off the date of the final examination because the progress is so much slow than I expected, so we need one or two more class uh, before the Final exam. Actually, the, date, the original plan, original plan is twelve. I tried to keep that date, but uh, there might be a chance to put off the date because we are too slow <laughs> than I expected. Then I will let you know the exact date. Uh, Before long. <laughs> okay. Any question? No? Okay. See you on Thursday. Gokan, you said to me you will go to Turkey. 
in the mid of June, right? End of June or mid of June? Oh, okay, I see. 